So now the problem number eight. You have a solution of dipolar molecules with a positive charge at the head. It looks like this. Delta positive and negative charge at the tail. And that is a convention, right? when there is no electric field applied to the solution. So, when there is no electric field the dipoles are you know uh, randomly oriented. When, when there is no electric field applied to the solution the dipoles point north, east, south and west with equal probabilities. Yes, because there is nothing to actually orient them right. The probability distribution is shown in part A. So, when there is electric field is absent. However, when you apply electric field to the solution, you observe that a different distribution with more heads pointing north because probably you applied uh, along the north direction electric field, north south direction. So, you know the, you get a different probability as shown in the part figure B. Calculate the entropy of the system in the absence of the field that means here and calculate the entropy of the system when the field is applied. Does the system become more ordered or disordered when the field is applied? So, we can calculate entropy and say more order or disorder or we can physically first think if they are ra randomly oriented in all possible directions which means they are disordered in the first case and if more is going towards the north that means they are ordered. But we can also calculate entropy and see the same thing. So, you know in that case whenever you have the formula for probability then uh, when you have the information of probability then the formula for entropy is P i ln P i. So, in the first case it is minus k b 1 by 4 ln 1 by 4, 4 times multiplied by 4 which will give us minus k b ln 1 by 4 which is k b ln 4 that is a formula that we get. In the other case it is minus k b 7 by 16 ln 7 by 16 plus 1 by 4 ln 1 by 4 2 times which is 2 by 4 plus 1 by 16 ln 1 by 16. We can we can calculate that using a calculator and see that, but k b part will keep the same. So, let us see what ln 1 by 4 gives us ln 4 gives us 1.38. So, it is 1.38 k b and right hand side let us see 7 by 16 uh, and 1 by 16. So, it is 7 divided by 16 ln 7 divided by 16 plus 2 by 4 is 1 by 2 1 divided by 2 ln 1 divided by 4 I have taken 2 terms already plus 1 by 16. So, 1 divided by 16 ln 1 divided by 16. Okay, so, did I consider all of that? So, 7 plus uh, 7 plus 1 by 4 is 4 by 16. So, 4 8 8 15 plus 1 16 yes correct. So, I am getting 1 mi minus 1.23. So, plus 1.23 kb. So, 1.38 is of course, more than 1.23 and therefore, this is where the entropy is more. This is where is entropy more and this is where things were random. That means, it could point to any directions north side this way. Here, it is less random and entropy is also less. So, that is why people associate randomness with entropy because randomness gives us a flatter distribution with equal probability in every direction whereas, uh, uh, an ordered uh, arrangement gives us peak distribution that means, it is ordered in one direction it is more and that will give us lesser entropy. Same similar problem in the next one also which of the two distributions shown below uh, which of the two distribution has higher entropy. So, you have to calculate that precisely and see that. So, half and 3 1 by 6 and here also half and 3 1 by 6. So, this is a trick question you understand. You do not have to really uh, do this problem because if you see that whether this one is half or this one is half does not matter. At the end you need you will have the formula minus k b sum over p i ln p i. So, whether the first term is uh, 
uh, different or the second time is different does not matter because you are going to sum over both. So, both will have same entropy. I do not have to do the calculation. You can cross check of course, by doing this. Next problem, the energy levels of an oscillator with frequency nu is written harmonic oscillator of course, or quantum harmonic oscillator. Frequency nu is written as this. A system consisting of n independent oscillator has the total energy this. Find the thermodynamic weight W m, this m should be capital m and the entropy. So, there are how many oscillators? n independent oscillators, right. So, the first one let us let us call the first one as uh, having E 1 energy, it is uh, let us say V 1 plus half H nu, E 2 is V 2 plus half H nu and things like that. Now, when you add them up, you are going to get V 1 plus V 2 plus V n plus half H nu multiplied by n is equal to whatever is given here, half n H nu plus m H nu, which means V 1 plus V 2 plus V n is m H nu. Now, V 1 can be any value, V 2 can be any value, V 3 can be any value, but sum is constrained, which is like this that if I have m units of energy and I am distributing in n distinguishable particles. Here the particles are oscillators because I know first oscillator because it is denoted by V 1, second oscillator is denoted by V 2. So, oscillators are distinguishable like boxes and, and, uh, and the oscillators are distinguishable like boxes and you have um, that and there are n, in, n independent of uh, oscillators are there and you have total m units of energy. Uh, so, uh, huh, that are indistinguishable m units of energy that are in because you can give any amount of energy right. So, what is the formula in that case you know basically you are uh, having uh, m units of energy distributing in n number of distinguishable particles that is the formula you have to use it is a star bar formula. So, it is m plus n minus 1. So, number of possible ways w m m plus n minus 1 c n minus 1. So, that will be the answer to this particular question. Find the thermodynamic weight, find the find out the relation between temperature and system energy. Now, once you get w m you can get s as uh, k b l n w and you will learn later that we can write temperature as del E by del S at a constant volume. So, here there is no question about the volume. So, and we have the um, have the energy values also. Now, the second problem is that find out the relation between temperature and system energy. Now, I need some more space for that. So, what is the energy of the system? Energy of the system is m h nu plus half n h nu and what is our entropy which is k b l n w m and we know that k b l n w m we know which is uh, m plus n minus 1 factorial divided by m factorial and n minus 1 factorial. So, l n of that we can use of course, starting approximation. So, we can have k b l n m plus n minus 1 factorial minus l n m factorial minus l n n minus 1 factorial. Okay. So, we can have k b m plus n minus 1 l n m plus n minus 1 minus m l n m okay, uh, n l n n minus n. So, minus m plus n minus 1 m l n m plus m minus n minus 1 l n 
n minus 1 plus n minus 1. This will give us kb m plus n minus 1 ln m plus n minus 1 minus m ln m minus n minus 1 ln n minus 1. So, that is just uh, S and then we know the formula for uh, temperature is 1 by T is del S by del S by del E. So, now what is our variable? Our variable is basically M, M and N both can vary, right. But if I have N number of independent oscillators, then I can have M as the variable. So, it is del S by del M del m by del e that is the formula. So, we have to differentiate this quantity by m and uh, we have to differentiate that quantity by e. So, we know that del e by del m is h nu therefore, del m by del e will be 1 by h nu and del s by del m we will have to do that by removing the some more uh, you know getting some more space out of this. So, let us do that S is k b l n w m which is given as k b m plus n minus 1 l n m plus n minus 1 minus m l n m minus n minus 1 ln n minus 1. I will just remove now this spaces. So, now I will just get some more space. Now, del s by del m is equal to k b. First term if I do it will become l ln m plus n minus 1 derivative of m plus n minus 1 is just 1 plus m plus n minus 1 multiplied you uh, know then multiplied by the derivative of ln quantity which is going to give us m plus n minus 1. Then second one is minus ln m minus m into 1 by m ok that is it and n is a constant term with respect to m. So, it will not come which is k b ln m plus n minus 1 plus 1 minus ln m minus 1 cancels each other giving me k b ln m plus n minus 1 by m. So, therefore, so 1 by t is nothing but k b by h nu ln m plus n minus 1 by m. At a very high temperature 1 by t becomes 0. So, and then right hand side the the n n be, you know m becomes much bigger than the n. So, therefore, it will become m by m and 1. So, the right hand side quantity will become 0 as well. So, at a high temperature is going to happen is that the particle is going to occupy much more higher levels and that is what is coming out from this particular one. Okay. So, now go to the problem number 11. So, derive the entropy change delta S as R ln uh, V 2 by V 1 uh, from S equal to ln W. Now, in order to do that derivation, let us imagine that in a volume V 1 or V, a particle is occupying only a V s uh, volume. So, each particle occupies V s volume. So, that means the number of possible w's that the particle can have is v by v s. So, therefore, when the particle was in v 1, the entropy will be k b ln v 1 by v s and then when the particle will occupy v 2, then it will be k b ln v 2 by v s. So, therefore, for delta s it is s 2 minus s 1 which is k b ln v 2 by v s minus k b ln v 1 by v s 
equal to kb ln v2 by v1. So, we will go to the next problem, problem number 12. Consider one mole of an ideal gas confined to a volume V. Calculate the probability that all, mole all molecules of this ideal gas will be found to occupy one half of the volume leaving the other half empty. Now, the thing is that the particle can be in anywhere of the in, in the box, right? And if I make the box into small, 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 small parts, then out of that half of the objects, whatever I can break it up into, let us say I break, it, break this volume into uh, n number of possible um, places, then only half that means only in n by 2 the particle can be there, in other half it will not be there. So, what, when you calculate the probability of that, it is nothing but n by 2 by n or half. So, for every particle, whether it will be on this half or that half is given by a probability half. So, now when you talk about that, uh, when you talk about probability of one particle occupying one side, it will be half and then the probability that all particles of one mole, uh, one mole gas, all particle will occupy one half will be half to the power Avogadro number and that will be an extremely small number because that means that it will be 2 to the power minus 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 is the extremely small number. So, it is improbable for a, one mole of gas to occupy just one half of the box plus 23 correct. Okay. So, that is the thing. So, question number 14 a system of two energy levels E0 and E1 uh, is populated by n particle at temperature T. The particle populated the energy levels according to particle populate particles populate energy levels according to the classical distribution law derive the expression of the average energy per particle okay and compute the average energy per particle as t tends to 0 and t tends to infinity so now it's a simple two level energy problem so it is e0 and e1 and there are n particles all together. I can have let us say n 1 particle here and uh, n 1 particle or n 0 particle here and n 1 particle there that is better uh, according to classical distribution law. So, classical distribution law says that total n particle n factorial by n 1 factorial and n 0 factorial where I our n 1 plus n 0 is equal to n. So, derive the expression for the average energy of the particle. So, you know that average energy of the particle is E i p i where which means I have like two states only. So, I will not put a sum now. I have E 0 and p i which is the probability of being in the 0 is n 0 by n and E 1 the probability is n 1 by n. Okay. And uh, I can yeah. So, that right now I can simplify it little bit E 0 N 0 by N plus E 1 N minus N 0 by N. So, now I get E 0 minus E 1 N 0 by N plus E 1. This is the average energy that I get. Compute the average energy per particle as t tends to 0 and t tends to infinity. So, now in order to compute the second one, I will have to assume that Boltzmann distribution is taking place even for such as you know simple models and we know that it, it follows Boltzmann distribution once this follow this uh, statistics. So, therefore, we can write p i as e to the power minus e i by k b t. So, if I use that p i value, then the average energy again will be e 1 e to the power minus e 1 by k b t plus e 0 e to the power minus e 0 by k b t divided by e to the power minus e 1 by k b t plus e to the power minus e 2 by k b t. So, you see I can write the average in both the ways they are basically the same thing. Now, so now let us take let us simplify this process. So, average energy is E0 e to the power minus E0 by kVt 
plus e1 e to the power minus e1 by kbt by e to the power minus e0 by kbt plus e to the power minus e1 by kbt. Once I have that, I can take, uh, let's say, e to the power minus e0 by kbt common, and I get e0 plus e1 into e to the power minus e1 minus e0 by kbt divided by 1 plus e to the power minus e1 minus e0 by kbt. Now this cancels. Now in this formula if I put at t equal to 0, what I am going to get? t equal to 0 means this quantity will be infinity, this becomes 0, so I will get e0, is just e0. And if t goes to infinity, what I am going to get? Then t infinity will become, this will become 0, so I will get e0 plus e1 in the numerator and in the denominator I will get, if t becomes infinity, that becomes 0, 1 plus 1 equal to 2. So, I will get average energy. So, at t equal to infinity, I get average energy of the particle, whereas at t equal to 0, it will collapse into the ground level and I will get only the energy of the E0. Okay. So, now uh, same way we calculate the average energy, you can calculate many other things. For example, this particular problem, let us, you know, uh, tells uh, particular problem tells us to calculate the average uh, value of throwing two dice. So, now we know when you throw two dice, we can get either 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 or 11 or 12 but each of them come with different probabilities. So, you know the probability of observing a 2 in a sum of a die is 1 by 36. Probability of observing a 3 is, a 3 can be obtained from 2 plus 1 or 1 plus 2. So, it is 2 by 36 and obs observing 4 will become again, I, I can get either 2 or 2, 1 or 3 or 3 or 1. So, 3 by 36, observing 5 will be, um, 4 by 36 and things like that. Observing 7 is 6 by 36 and it will decrease after that, 8 will be 5 by 36 again and things like that. So, what is the average value that we are going to observe? Is that again the average value that we are going to observe, average value uh, I would write as let us say die throw, so I will write average value as let us say d, it will be d i p i sum which means di is the value, so 2 come with 1 by 36 probability, 3 will come with 2 by 36 probability, 4 will come by 3 by 36 probability, 5 will come by 4 by 36 probability, S uh, 6 will come 5 by 36 probability, 7 will come by 6 by 36 probability, 8 will come by 5 by 36, 9 will come by 4 by 36, 10 will come as 3 by 36, 11 will come as 2 by 36 and 12 will come as 1 by 36. We can simplify that because by the symmetry of the problem is that I can get 2 and 12 with 1 by 36, so 14 by 36. I can get 3 and 11 as uh, uh, 3 and 11 as with 2 by 36, so it is 14 by 36 into 2. I can get 10 and 4, the again 14 by 36 with 3. I can get that means 14 by 36 with 4 which is 5 and uh, 9 plus I have 4 and uh, 5 and 9 and then I have 6 and 6 and 8 again 14 by 36 but now 5 plus I have only 7 by 37 I have just 7 uh, into 6 by 36 that will be a separate thing to do, I do not have it twice because this is just one number. So, I can of course write as uh, 14 by 36 into 3, 
which is 7 into 6. Uh, so, I am writing 7 into 2 into 3. So, uh, 14 by 36 into 3. So, now you see by the symmetry of the problem, now I can take 14 by 36 common and that leaves me with a sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. So, sum of 5 and plus additionally 3. So, how much that is we know sum of 5 is 5 into 6 by 2. So, which is uh, 15 and plus 3 is 18. So, it is nothing but 14 into 18 by 36. So, it is answer is average D is 14 into 18 by 36. Let us simplify it a little bit. So, the answer is 7 basically as you can see. So, the expectation value of throwing 2 die is 7.